Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. It's the uh, Friday before week 14 in the NFL, and we are doing our usual uh, ATS rundown with professional sports handicapper Teddy Covers. Teddy Covers, the first uh, NFL game I have to ask you about, right? Houston and the Pats. I'm sure everyone's wondering about it. The Pats coming off of two straight losses. Uh, you know, last week they got a big ATS loss, although, you know, a lot of those um, Philly points were admittedly kind of fluky. Uh, you know, they look like they, uh, you know, probably can bounce back, but it's definitely not one of those situations where the where they're like an automatic lock uh, coming off of a loss. What's your take on Houston Pats? Well, I mean, you know, we're talking about a Patriots team that hasn't lost three games in a row in, what, like 10 years? Right. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's been quite some time. So you can understand the market support for New England, but let me make this very clear. It's going to be hard to make money with the Patriots moving forward, and we've already seen that over the course of the last month where they have been money burners, and it's easy to understand why. You know, New England has undergone uh, a massive barrage of injuries, you know, on both sides of the football, but particularly on the offensive side. And that happened after they'd already gotten off to an undefeated, were they 9-0 and when they suffered their first loss? Yeah. So they were the team that everyone's talking about, the Super Bowl, the defending Super Bowl champs, winning every game. The books have taken a pounding on New England over the course of the last you know, decade plus. Uh, and with all of those factors, every week, the point spread gets ratcheted a little bit higher. Well, the injuries have made the Patriots a different team than what they were a month ago, a uh, significantly different team. And let's not sell Houston short. I know that the Texans played poorly uh, last week uh, in Buffalo, their defense kind of got pushed around. And uh, Tyrod Taylor had one of those games where he was able to hit Sammy Watkins on a bunch of jump ball passes, and Watkins caught those. But Houston had won their previous four. They're back at home. I love this defense matched up against a Patriots offense that's mm -hmm. pretty spotty right now. And even though the long-term trend says that New England's the way to look here, I'm not uh, going in that direction if yeah. I'm playing. I want the home dog. All right. That was my initial thought when the line came out uh, Sunday night. Still not exactly sure what I think about it. Then I want to ask you about uh, the Falcons and the Panthers. You know, the Falcons have lost eight in a row, ATS. And the Panthers, uh, I didn't recognize it on the opener, but very close to kickoff, I recognized that the Saints were probably a pretty good bet against the Panthers on Sunday. They did wind up covering. You know, the Panthers are once again a big favorite here. And uh, when I did my initial research on this game Sunday night, I started to think, you know what, I bet you the Falcons might be a good play here. Still definitely not sure that I uh, think that, that I agree with myself uh, from Sunday night. What do you think, Teddy? Falcons are getting all these points, maybe break their ATS losing streak? Uh, I see. See, Carolina's not a team I'm in any rush to stand in front of. Mm -hmm. And the Panthers this week remind me a little bit of the Seahawks last week. Two weeks ago, remember how Seattle's defense got absolutely torched by Ben yeah. Roethlisberger sure. and the Steelers? And all the veterans on that defense came together and said, hey, this can't happen again. And they played as good a defensive game as I've seen them play all year against the Vikings last week. I mean, they were absolutely dominant. Carolina's defense, every bit as good as Seattle's, you know, maybe better. And they stunk last week. They got lit up by Drew Brees. They missed tackles. They took bad angles. They didn't force turn. I mean, it was a, a litany of mistakes. And if you read some of the comments coming out of that locker room this week from the defensive side of the football, Carolina – with a dominant defense, is capable of stepping up here. Let's not forget, you know, why have the Falcons lost all these games? Their defense has exceeded expectations. The problem yeah. for Atlanta is on the offensive side of the ball, particularly right. in the red zone, right. where they've been abysmal in recent weeks. And Matt I'm Ryan turned into a turnover machine, and it's kind of like uh, you're wondering if that's, you know, something he's going to fix all of a sudden uh, one week or if it's going to keep going on to the end of the season. You know, I mean, we, we talk about weak receiving cores. I know Atlanta's got Julio Jones, and Julio Jones is one of these, you know, name players that has put up, at times, monster numbers. The rest of the receiving core stinks. Mm -hmm. There's nobody else but the one superstar for Matt Ryan to throw to is having a real impact in the red zone. I'm not excited about the Falcons plus the points this week. If I'm playing, I'm laying. Okay, fair enough. And then uh, I want to ask you about the Chiefs. You know, the Chiefs, the opposite of the Falcons. They've covered six in a row ATS, and they're playing San Diego this week. They're given 10 or 10 and a half, but they blew out San Diego. I mean, absolutely destroyed them in San Diego a few weeks ago. So if this, you know, week's game is anything close to uh, what we saw a few weeks ago, maybe the Chiefs are once again a great bet, even giving all these points. What do you think? Well, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a Chargers offense that is beyond injury riddled. I mean, they've been devastated. In every facet. Their receiving core has got nobody left. Their line has nobody left. Their running game has been non-existent all year. You know, we've seen them held to a field goal twice uh, in the last three weeks, including that loss to Kansas City. And, of course, 
you know, both of those games where they were held to a field goal, they went against good defenses and make no mistake about it. The Chiefs defense is very, very good. That's why Kansas City has been able to cover their last six uh, while winning all of those games in straight up fashion. But, you know, this isn't a series that we're used to seeing two blowouts, you know, uh, in, in, in the same season. Kansas City is not a team built to win by margin. And for as poorly as San Diego has played, the effort's been there for the Chargers. And I was impressed with their defensive effort last week. It's a relatively short turnaround since that 33-3 to blowout. Uh, and KC had one previous instance this season in which they've been laying double digits. They lost that game outright mm -hmm. to the Chicago Bears. So it's not anything that I plan on getting to the window, not at the current price, but if I had to play this one, it would only be the Chargers plus the points. Uh, the time to bet Kansas City was last month not this week. And if right. you missed out on that money-making opportunity with the Chiefs during this impressive spread run, All right. you I mean, sit you back and wait for the next one. Sure. You say that the Chiefs aren't built to uh, get blowout wins, but they've been scoring 30-plus points week in and week out during this run. I think they've averaged uh, over 32 points per game in these uh, last six straight covers. And, uh, you know, I, is there any other team that's averaged more than that? I don't know. But, uh, you know, that's a lot of points to be getting. Uh, they're certainly putting up the kind of points that a team that's built to get blowouts is uh, would put up, you know? Well, let me jump in here for just a minute. Because, yeah. again, last week the score's 20-14 to 14 in the fourth quarter. KC's right. losing. Yes. Oakland is in field goal range. And then Derek Carr melts down. Yeah. And boom, intercept, you know, you have three interceptions on the, you know, bang, bang, bang. And all of a sudden, KC with defensive scores, with great field position. And the final score says Chiefs 34, Raiders 20. Right. But it wasn't. If you watch the game, Kansas City's offense didn't do a whole lot. Yeah. You know, the, uh, well, their defense scored and the defense put the offense in good position. But, you know, Kansas City with a the lead, they don't throw. Alex Smith is not testing receivers downfield. He doesn't make mistakes, but it is not an aggressive, high octane offense. And, even though the Chiefs have been putting up some impressive point totals in recent weeks, when you watch them, this isn't a team built to win by big margins. Okay, fair enough. And then, uh, so that's all I wanted to make sure that we got to uh, in the uh, ATS segment of our rundown this week. What else would you like to bring to our attention, Teddy? Well, it's the same team I talked about last week at this spot. That's the Tampa Bay Bucs. Mm -hmm. you know, we took Tampa uh, as short favorites last week against Atlanta. I'm going to take them here as slightly bigger favorites against New Orleans. Uh, and there's a lot, you know, a lot of anti-Saints <laughs> in this opinion. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, New Orleans, they played their guts out last week. They really did. And when all was said and done, they still came up on the losing end. The offense, you know, they got, came up with that 38 points last week. This is an offense. They've been routinely, you know, 28, 30, 35 at home. Put them on the road. They've averaged 17 points a game this season. Their last two road games, they combined for 20. Uh, both blowout losses. They're built to win in the home dome. They're not built to win on the highway. And the Saints' offense riddled with injuries, uh, key injuries this week. Their receiving core all banged up. Their offensive line all banged up. Their running back core all banged up. A losing team, tail end of the season. Tampa beat them by a touchdown in the first meeting in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Four and a half to me seems very, very reasonable with the better team and the much better defense in, in Tampa Bay. Makes sense to me. That's why I was thinking uh, when the line opened, I just didn't pull the trigger because uh, I was just wondering if three and a half, four was too many points. Teddy Covers, though, thinks uh, not really. Thanks so much, Teddy. We'll talk to you next week for our ATS rundown for NFL Week 15. I look forward to it.